My name is Lars Deutsch. I'm going to briefly talk about my workflow, but more than anything about mixing with headphones. And first of all, not that you need my permission, but I'm going to give you permission to mix with headphones. For me, it was a big deal to see Andrew Sheps mixing really amazing stuff on kind of at that time, I guess, $90 Sony headphones. And I'm very particular about quality and I go to great length and do many revisions and anybody who's worked with me knows how obsessive I am. And workflow wise, headphones just make a lot of sense for me. I'm going to talk about why and I'm going to give you a couple of pointers how you can use headphones best for your ends. So why headphones? First of all, for me, freedom. I like the idea that the reference that I'm used to, the sound that I know, the space that I know is traveling with me. If I have a session in any other studio, in any other place, in a hotel room, I know exactly how this translates. And so once I'm used to my headphones, they give me a lot of flexibility. They give me a lot of freedom. The other thing for me is that I try to treat this room. I had it analyzed and I had the first elements shipped and it got more and more claustrophobic and I would have had to block this window. And for all the biohackers, all the people that need sunlight, you can understand that you, I, don't, I didn't want to work in a room just with art, artificial light. Many of you have untreatable rooms or there's limits or you want to work at 5 a.m. or you want to work around neighbors and outside of your sound not getting out with headphones is also a little less of the outside coming in. And anybody who's built a studio facility knows how tough it is to fully disconnect yourself from the world out there. Another reason for me to move to headphones was value for money. At the end of the day, one thing matters. One thing and one thing only is what I do in here, will it translate somewhere else? Will what I do here make sense in a high-end professional context? So what I'm doing is I have three pairs of headphones that are in the $1,500 to $2,000 range that I can rotate between and I can listen to for different things in different environments. But it still seems a very reasonable expense for the kind of projects I work on. I currently own two pairs of headphones that I think that universally translates anywhere and I'm wearing the more polished one of the two at the moment which are the Audis MM500. I just recently got them and I did a, I, I produced a show theme so I worked on them writing the material, producing them, and no ear fatigue, which is very important to me. That's why I'm struggling with overly bright speakers or headphones. And the other thing is then after creating it, I, I mix, record, mix again, master. So I need a pair that is comfortable, that translates, and that doesn't give me ear fatigue. So these are like categories that are really important to me. And so if you check for headphones, make sure you find something that has enough accuracy and resolution, but doesn't give you your fatigue. So when people talk about the sound of the headphones, what they sometimes forget is what drives the headphones. There are headphones that are difficult to, to drive and that don't sound uh, great with a weak headphone amp. And then there are headphones that are easy and that work well on most sources. Regardless of that, I would recommend that if you buy a sound card or an interface for home, you really check that they that it has a powerful um, headphone amp because that's important for your sound or I, uh, you can try one of these that's a dragonfly that's a little headphone amp that goes into a USB port and I'm a big fan of these uh, I've heard $150 headphones with these sound better than $1,000 headphones and they, this works on every um, every device a while back I worked on a track and I was the producer and Irko who recently mixed Kanye and The Weeknd was the mixing engineer and he sent me a mix and I wasn't in my usual spot and I just quickly plug in some headphones into a MacBook Pro and I listened and I heard these artifacts and weird things in high frequencies and I called him and asked to make a couple of changes so he rendered a new version and we did a couple of rounds and at some point he said look I'm in a really good studio I really don't hear what you're talking about and it turned out that the headphone amp, because I was using the same headphone, the headphone amp of the older MacBook Pro was not up to par and the high frequency broke down. And 
there were artifacts that weren't actually in the mix. So I made Eco do these extra rounds because of an issue in headphone amps. So make sure you have the right headphone amp when you work. So in this, in this chain of preamp headphones, there's one or two more things coming. One is your ears. And if you want to break it down even further, it's your ears and your brain. And so what you hear what you hear, but it will translate differently to the outside world. In an ideal scenario, now with these headphones, I trust how they translate and I don't need to do a lot of mental work to imagine it, but it's still, regardless of what level of speakers and headphones you work on, it is vital to every now and then check with the outside world. And a good example for this is when I upgraded my speakers a while back, I did this mix and I like depth of field and was very delicate and all of these layers upon layers to create this beautiful deep mix. And then I did a car test and because my new speakers, I picked them because they're so good at depth of field. In the car test, the depth of field disappeared a little bit and there was masking and things were on top of each other. So mixing on these speakers then, I realized if it gets close to not being very crystal clear here, it will be messy somewhere else. So I kind of always listened with that in mind. So it's important for you to understand what your headphones can and what they can do, how they slanted, what their character is and how that translates to every, everybody else or a kind of imagined neutral listening environment. One important thing to watch out for is the stereo field when you pick headphones. There is a high-end expensive pair of headphones that has been around for a long time that sound really good and that has an incredibly wide stereo field. So I'm sure there's all kinds of great reasons to buy this and work with these. For me, the stereo field is so wide that I have the exact same problem I have with my speakers that were too 3D. It pulls too much out of the middle and I get a false sense of space. And when I go back to an average pair of headphones, when the stereo field collapses, it gets muddy in the middle. So I would be mindful with headphones that have a really, really wide stereo field. In fact, I would make a point that if you have a pair of headphones like my recording headphones that has a very narrow stereo field and that feels like you're more boxed in and smaller, that's a little bit like the NS10 effect where you know everything is so tight in one area where you mix better because if you make it work there, it will work anywhere. If you have a really wide stereo field, this might be difficult to translate later. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of checking headphones for a neutral, normal stereo field. The other side effect of having a wide stereo field is that your mix might not be as wide in reality um, for everybody else when it seems very wide for you. Why spend some serious money and buy some high-end headphones? The most important thing for me is the low mids, the bass, the sub, this area. And I didn't trust my mixes to translate anywhere until a pair of headphones that can really project these frequencies and show them to me in, in a lot of detail. And this is where I think the, the price comes in, right? because I haven't heard a, a cheaper pair of headphones that can do that. And the other thing, of course, is you want a very flat response. You want to have accuracy all around. And so the advantage then is, of course, you're getting closer to an audio post facility, closer to an actual mixing room, and you have most of the frequency and most of the elements available for you. So it's, you're basically paying for good data. The problem with that of, is that if you pay for good data, you need to keep in mind that most people listen to music on AirPods, which can be very tricky. They need to be played loud for uh, some of the frequency come out and they don't have necessarily the best bass. So when you produce, even more important than when you mix, you need to keep in mind that if you build the chorus hit on this big sub hitting, that for a lot of people that big sub will not be hitting. You will hear it in your headphones, other people will not. I have a pair of headphones that is very unpleasant. It has a lot of high frequency, it's kind of difficult to drive, and some of the high frequency is a little piercing and annoying. There's a couple of brands of monitor speakers that have a similar sound that I'm not going to mention now. These kind of cans give me ear fatigue, the speakers give me ear fatigue, and to, a, to an extent, 
this is a false idea of detail because it's just so overhyped that you hear issues that are sometimes not there. I still use these headphones though for a final pass for two things. One, to DS. If I'm not sure if I've gone far enough or if there's S's pop out, if I can stomach the S on those headphones, I'm fine anywhere else in the world. The other reason I use those headphones is for like a general smoothness path. So I recently did a sci-fi synth album, very retro, very 50s, very round. And when I had the mix where I wanted it, I used those very unflattering piercing headphones and I listened to beginning to end and just pointed out a couple of frequency and a couple of things in each track that popped out in these. Once I tuck them in and once I can stomach them in these headphones, they will work anywhere. Here's a nice little low frequency test. We have the test oscillator here and we have the analyzer here in Logic and I'm gonna just switch on this sine wave and then I will go down on the frequency and I will check how low I can go and how low my headphones uh, are able to handle the frequencies. So these headphones go really low. If I just bring up the volume a little bit, I can still very clearly hear 31 Hertz. Especially if you do hip hop or trailer stuff, these subs are very important. There's a limit with the headphone because you, you can not feel the, head, the, the sub on your chest like you would usually feel in the cinema, but you can still hear them here. So if you have a pair of headphones that doesn't go down this far, you need to either adjust for that and sometimes you can just make a safety roll off in your DAW in the mixing or you need to go somewhere else and do at least one final pass to get the sub rights. I do not use any tools that uh, correct the frequency response of my headphones. I rather pick headphones that are made for mixing and that are as close to flat as possible. I have issue with some of the correction softwares. I have by no means tried them all. Uh, actually, I think I only tried two or three. So I'm not using any of those. What I do like and use is a crossfeed tool. And here you can use any plugin. There's many plugins to do this. The one I'm using here is Can Opener, which is simple and which sounds realistic to me. And I'm only checking for two things. The first thing I check for, is there anything that masks my lead vocals or my lead instrument? And the second thing I check for, is the beat still tight or do things get messy down there? So this is how this mix sounds without. Ready for a scare, make you scream is the theme. Spider webs, I'm a ghost, you can't catch me on the scene. I'm a big bad wolf for a total different beast. Yeah, you in for a spook, do you want a trick or treat? Ready for a scare, make you scream is the theme. Spider webs, I'm a ghost, you can't catch me on the scene. I'm a big bad wolf for a total. So there's barely any difference. I mean, there is a difference, but it's not that we are missing anything or anything is totally out of focus. As much fun as it might be, be working in cans like this or working on cool production. When you crank up the volume, keep your hand on the volume knob, listen to it for a second to see how it translates when it's loud and then turn it back down. You don't wanna have any ringing ears at the end of the day. You wanna work as quietly as you can, work with your energy up and with you hearing everything. And if you go out after a day of work and you wanna to listen to an audiobook, a podcast or some music while you jog, Please understand that your ears are not the biggest fans of in-ears, so in-ears are not meant to be worn for hours and hours and also listen to them on moderate volume. <laughs> 